Certainly can, and that's what we're going to have to see here, guys. This is the finals between Elite Eight and Impunity. One of these teams are going to Worlds. One of these teams will be crowned the champions of Southeast Asia. Which one will it be? Well, they've gone for the European suggestion, and they've gone DefQ running in the lane quadruple pot. Book of Eulogy is really looking for sustain because I think obviously early on he is going to get punished by those Heliogenesis coming down from the Celeste. And it is going to be Spaghetti running that CP Kestrel in the jungle. A little bit more effective, especially when you pair that up with Quatevoir on the Lance. They're going to be hugely impactful if they choose to take any early invades, as well as if they come into lane and land that... Um, if they land that Impale onto the Celeste, obviously Celeste is going to take a lot of punishment. Certainly, and that's where Quadavar can be very impactful. Quadavar has been such a fantastic captain to watch in this tournament so far yeah. at Scoundrel. He has innovated his build wherever possible, and I'm expecting on a lance uh, we'll see something very likely. It, is, it may not be something huge. That's the thing about Quadavar. Sometimes he goes down a build, which is absolutely crazy, but we'll talk about it in sets as Spaghetti has entered the lane. Hanyega's in a bit of trouble. Does take about half his health and damage, but the Glimmer Shots are continuing to rain down, and Spaghetti really making this Celeste life a misery. So when I was learning CP Kestra, I learned from a guy in Europe called Itachi, and uh, he was basically talking to me about how CP Kestrel absolutely wrecks Celeste because of the pure range advantage you have at the start and how squishy Celeste is in terms of HP. You can just sit there and rain Glimmer Shots down. That's the oh. first blood. That happened before we even could see it go down. And Quite of, uh, just like, yes, yeah. let's go, guys. This is it. First game of the final and first blood goes over to Impunity. Oh, and again, that's that wonderful use of the Githian wall. It roots up the alpha, and here we go. DefQ locked into a bit of a duel. Yeah, DefQ is uh, very content to be doing this. Look at that, it was heart from stack stacking up. DefQ looking for the kill. Quite a far will find it, but now DefQ in a bit of trouble. Prime Directive lands, and unfortunately not enough for Quadavar to get his carry out alive. Official Hines sticking around, quite a while. Has to be careful, he hasn't been enough more than he can chew. Helo Genesis starting to fall from the sky. Quite a will go down as a return. Well, wow. Elite 8 get a return two kills here from a little bit of an overextension in lane by Impunity. Official Hine has his heroic perk proc. That reboot will come through, but pre 6 is not that much of a big deal because you don't have to use your ultimate at this point in time. Spaghetti has been happily farming in the jungle, by the way. That's kind of where he's been sat for the majority of the game. We'll see his back camp spawn and we'll head back towards them. Interestingly enough, because this is CP Kesha and Blackfeather, you will want to buy Atlas Pauldrons as Ilock. You want to buy Atlas Pauldrons because obviously the Blackfeather is going to provide a significant threat to your Celeste, so you want to slow his attack speed, but you're also going to want that contraption for the CP Kestrel. There is, again, one of those situations where both carries warrant a defensive item choice, and it's going to be very crucial which one you choose first. Yeah, no, I, I can see that, and uh, for Ilock and Official Hyen, I can certainly see an Atlas being prioritized. Imperium, Impunity, sorry, pushing up here, looking for... Uh, perhaps a overextended Elite 8 member. They don't find it, but they do take away one of those treants for themselves. Quite a while going to run on in. Giffian Wall knocks everyone sideways. Official Hine getting into the fight. Hasn't got his reboot up yet. It will come up in a second. Hanyeg is very comfortable just laying down the trap spam. It is going to be Elite 8 forced under their turret, but now Alpha does have her passive available. Yeah, that reboot's back up available. Good weathering of the storm by Elite 8, by the way. They've been able to kind of rebut everything that Impunity has tried to do here. No level 6 for DefQ. He has to be careful about these engages. Can't get out as easily. I'm going to say Quatervor hasn't been hitting as many of those Impales as I think he would have liked. But the Githian Wolves have been pretty solid. Have been solid. Have certainly been setting things up. All this time, though, Spaghetti is stealing away the camps. As long as Official Hine is in vision, that just makes it so easy for Spaghetti to do so. Han Jaeger is looking for a kill onto Quatervor, and it will be Quatervor falling, not able to give him more away the damage. Han Jaeger's Goes down very low, but here comes Official Hind. There's the Prime Directive straight on top of Def Q. Active Camera Trap means that he cannot chase. And the core collapse goes out from Hun Jaegers to make sure Official Hind gets out safely. Yeah, quite a uh, unfortunately got caught out by Hun Jaegers. Celeste there, the uh, core collapse at the end there. Locked him in the turret range and quite a take a couple of turret hits there and went down for his sins. But uh, a fine Official Hind comes in, does back up, protects the... Ilock and Hun Jaegers from those stray glimmer shots. And again, Elite 8 off to a good start versus Impunity here. And this is something that we did see yesterday. A couple of times 
uh, Impunity's early game did start to struggle and they came back in the later stages where coordination and build path really started to come into effect. Certainly, it is about a thousand gold lead now for Impunity, so uh, in that sense, Spaghetti has been doing work to, to keep that CS lead in the favour of his team. People uh, might, I was just to say, see, people might be wondering why double tier one shield has come out for DefQ. Actually gives you more shielding for the money investment at this point in time against the Celeste. And, and uh, the Alpha, it's a double C yeah, composition double CD coming composition. out from Elite 8, something that they prioritized yesterday and something that yesterday when they prioritized it was well thought out considering the composition they were against, a Sky, a Finn, and of course that um, that Celeste, oh, 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 Kestrel it was. A fight breaking out, Hanyegas catches Spaghetti in the core collapse. Spaghetti trying to dance away, but it's going to be official high on top. Finds the kill for himself, and now Def Q stuck in the middle of it all. He's going to go down. It's two for Elite Eight, and they're looking for the third, but Quadivoire will not give it to them. Wow, warning bells starting to sign here for Impunity. They might be ahead in gold, but right now Elite Eight taking every fight they have taken. In the last two minutes, again, Hun Jaegers on this Celeste has been incredible with his positioning, been very aggressive, more so than you'd expect. That's a great core collapse again, going to force out the boots from Quadavoir. Spaghetti did have the goal to combine that Shatter Glass, by the way, but didn't choose to do so before that fight. There are some item spikes being hit on the side of Impunity. Serpent's Mask out for Death Q gives him the sustain. Uh, Fountain not yet completed, by the way, for Quadavoir. That's a big deal because Fountain is now there for Ilock. And Hunyega's already picked up the Eve of Harvest, something that they do often see. Official Hind's going to get rooted up. Yeah, no passive available for the Alpha. He's going to get knocked into the one shot. Tries to dive forward and get something for himself, but could not do so. Now the Siege starting to break out. It is Quadivoire heading down to the shop to complete that fountain just in case things were to turn south. But this turret just taking so much damage. Solar Storm flies out. Def Q jumps into it. Takes a bit of damage in the process, but it's not going to mean too much. This turret is falling. Core Collapse delays it, but now here comes Def Q looking for Hanyegas. Great Giffian wall, and Hanyegas will fall. Ilok throws out the fountain, but I'm not sure it's enough. He goes down as well. A Double for Def Q, and this is where an impunity come alive. Elite 8 stood too long trying to protect a turret that was destined to go down. And I've got to say, Quadavoir's positioning right there was absolutely perfect. Moves up, gets a double Githian wall, locks them in up against the wall, threatens the Impale, and the only way they could go was towards the brush. Impunity, rough early game again, but steadied the ship, and they pick up the gold mine on the turret, and suddenly they are miles ahead in gold. This is just what happens. Those first damage items is when they spike around. Yeah. It's, it reminds me of TSM in North America. They play so heavily around their item spike capabilities. That first Aftershock, that first Sorrow Blade, that first um, Shadow Glass, whatever it may be that gives you that first power spike, and then they execute so perfectly. That's a 3,000 gold lead out of nowhere. Yeah, going to have to defend this first tier turret, though, as the Elite AR pushing as a unit. Look at Spaghetti's build path. I wonder where Spaghetti's going. Is he moving towards a double Shatter Glass here? We'll have to find out as it does look like Quadivoire wants to fight. Core Collapse catches up the lance, but the glimmer shots from Spaghetti are just ripping through Ilok's health bar. Just doesn't have any shielding to deal with this Kestrel. Elite 8 on one level needed to get the overdriven um, Heliogenesis, who's going to give a massive range advantage back to Hun Jaegers, potentially put him out of the range of the glimmer shot for the most part too. It's a big item spike, a big level spike for him, and he's not too far away from hitting it. These back camps might actually put him over the edge. One shot, one kill comes through. It looks like Impunity want to fight now before they have to deal with that. Aren't really finding anyone caught out of position. Is going to be Elite 8 making their way to the turret long way round. Solar Storm going to hit into Def Q. And an Impunity with a chance to disengage. All set up. Active Camo goes out. Official Hind gets locked in. And Impale goes out. And he is rebooting. Will be able to come back up. But Def Q looking to try and find the kill. Glimmer shots from a fast spaghetti. That artillery cannon. But still, Elite 8 surviving. Han Jaegers have to be careful. Impunity still looking to put pressure on. The minion wave about to hit into this turret. Excalibur. Draw a spaghetti dances on the line of death. You have to respect the Helogenesis spam that can come out of this Celeste. Especially with the Eve of Harvest now completed, he can basically do it all day long. He kind of can basically equal the range of the CP Kestrel now as well. And remember, during the cast animation of the Glimmer Shot, CP Kestrel is static. It's perfect time to use those Heliogenesis and punish her for using those uh, Glimmer Shots. It's kind of a, a war of the skill shot, but at this point, I would say Heliogenesis is easier to hit than the uh, the Glimmer Shot is. And it's overdriven now, which yeah. means that the range advantage that uh, Han Jaegers has available is huge, just to sit so far back and avoid uh, being you know poked back in return. We've yet to see... Um too many gauntlets have a massive impact here, by the way, for Ilok. It's been kind of quiet on that front. 
Looks like a double, it's a double shatter glass. This is what we've seen in Europe on CP Castro all the time. It basically designed, I guess, specifically to do as much damage to the Celeste as physically possible. And again, not much shielding coming through as well. So this makes that high impact damage for the double shatter glass really impactful. Looks like uh, Ilox actually going towards a crucible before going towards either a um, contraption or an Atlas Pauldrons, which means both Death Q and. Um, Spaghetti are going to have a great time, but we've got to fight. Yes, yeah, Spaghetti gets a little bit caught out by official high. And Defku, though, he's jumping onto Hun Jaegers, blocks up the core, collapse, and now Hun Jaegers in trouble. And everyone turning to try and support, but Defku dances on top of that Celeste. Official Hine going to find Spaghetti, but he goes into his reboot process, looking to come back and looking to do the damage. Spaghetti trying to escape a prime directive at range. Defku just being that brick wall, and he will find the kill. Impunity just playing perfectly. I'm so this. glad to finally see. A Southeast Asian team brings something like a Black Feather to the table to deal with these picks like Celeste, to be deal with these picks like Samuel, like uh, Scarf, you know, like Sky even to an instance, because it is just so good against them. You can see how devastating Black Feather is when a Celeste is picked up. It's so difficult for Celeste to even be able to peel against him. Turret going down here, we're going to have uh, a fight too. Uh, impale one shot, Ilog takes a huge chunk of damage, but it's not the main target. They were looking for that Celeste, and I'm sure that one shot connected, Def Q was dancing on her, but Official Hind wants this. Gauntlet going to catch up. Def Q as he has to dance backwards. Spaghetti looking for a better position to throw out the glimmer shots. Def Q dodging away from the CC. Hun Jaegers caught across the wall and Spaghetti now running for his life. Fountain comes out. Spaghetti will go down. There's the termination protocol right on top, but a good gift and wall disengages. And Def Q should be able to escape here. I look trying to keep in range, but I think the dirty deed has. Scarf or I'll right. pick Sky and let's just try and win this in terms of who's the better player. Now we're actually seeing you know, a little bit like we see in North America and Europe, you pick Celeste, you get punished for it because you pick something that is especially quite good into her. Black Feather, in my opinion, especially Weapon Black Feather, one of the best picks into a Celeste because of how easily he can stick to her, how easily he can dodge through core collapse because of his Rose Offensive. It is just so good to be able to get through that CC and then consistently force Celeste to either have to use Heliogenesis on herself or try and predict the kiting backwards movements. And obviously, you can even block Supernova by using that uh, Rose Offensive too. So. Again, I think Impunity made a really good call here. And it's, again, it's, it's more akin to what we see in Europe, actually. This is something a bit more European style of this where we're laying black feather that we often see come through. Yeah, no, it's something that, you know, when we discuss um, who we think are strong on an update, I think we both agreed that Black Feather is up there in the top three yeah. as far as laners are concerned. Absolutely, I think um, Black Feather is really good. Something that's really interesting is, and you mentioned it before we hit this pause, you know, it's a player pause and we're just dealing with the, the issue uh, behind the scenes, um, is that a Crucible was coming through from Elite Eight. Now, yeah. you, you thought that was a bit of a weird item. Um, I, I've got an idea of what Elite Eight are trying to do with it. They want Official Hind to dive Spaghetti, and we have come out of a pause. They want Official Hind to be able to, to dive onto Spaghetti. So what a Crucible allows the team to do, especially for Ilock as well, is that they can go to a danger zone where a, a active camo is and continue the pressure. Yeah. The odd issue is they haven't gone into a contraption, and usually that's what we see when there's a CP cast. Yeah, I think if you're worried about active camos, you're probably better off picking a contraption than you would be picking off a Crucible. The only thing I think about the Crucible is that maybe it keeps uh, Han Jaegers, who's not going a reflex block, safer from something like a Lance. So you're using it, I guess, initially to stop at that engage from the Lance, and that's potentially where I think he's more interested in, because um, Han Jaegers just, just has no intention of getting his own reflex block here, really just accelerating that damage build. Looks like he's working towards... I mean, I mean, he's got a Piercing Shard, right? That could be a Shattered Glass that he could build that Heavy Prism into. It could just literally be two broken mints, which we have seen from time to time, by the way. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it is a build that exists. Oops, Solar Storm going to catch the Gold Miner. Impunity trying to rush it down, but Elite 8 coming in. Does go over to Impunity. The fight beginning. Spaghetti dancing around in his active cameras, and Han Jaeger in just so much trouble. He goes down. Gauntlet goes out, but it's just not enough. Official Hind getting caught on up, popping that Termination Protocol on top of Death Q, but it's just not effective. This is the the ace coming through for Impunity at the 14 minute mark as they find themselves uh, 8,000 gold in the lead. And they're going to rush straight to this choke point turret there. No qualms about it. No trying to push the lane up specifically. Actually, they're just looking like they're dancing around. Here we go. They're going to move on to this turret now. And again, you saw how powerful that Black Feather was against the Celeste. She can do nothing. She's consistently in a state of running away. One shot, one kill. <laughs> 450 damage right to Celeste's face. Forces her away from that turret. Can't defend it. And suddenly it's another turret in the bag here for Impunity and they accelerate that gold lead very close to 10k. Active camera's getting set oh, up. Oh, this is dirty, Spaghetti. You're not allowed to do this. They have no idea where Spaghetti is and they could just walk straight into the clutches. You see Impunity disengaging. They're all standing in it! 
Oh, oh the three man oh. stun! Spaghetti finds them all. Hunt Jaegers goes down. Official Hind goes down. Ilock gonna go down as well. It's a three man ace. It's ridiculous, Excoundrel. And Impunity with 25 seconds are certainly going to take down these Vein Crystal turrets and secure themselves game one in this finals. Patience is a virtue, and Spaghetti has it in spades. Waited, wasn't interested in Alpha, wasn't interested in Arden. He wanted Celeste and ended up getting a three for one smash on that as well. What an insane active camo's done, and the execute potential was there from the Black Feather. Probably one of the best setups I've seen with a CP Kester in a professional game as well. And unfortunately, no contraption, no scout traps in base, no flares. We may see it in the jungle mm. um, coming through for game two here, uh, as it does look like it is going to be in the lane. So, Def Q, he has a lot of opportunity here. I expect uh. a poison shift first, probably, uh, so, no, no, a poison shift first, probably more likely the, the Sorrow Blade first, so we can unlock his divergent path. Yeah, maybe, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a poison shift yeah, come yeah. through, because obviously, Hun Jaegers, it's incredibly important at, at stopping the sustain here. It's double CP. Yeah, I, I, just don't, I just don't see the obsession with CP Sky and these situations. I, I understand it's a lot of heavy hitting damage if you can keep your range and as long as Lance is doing the peeling for you, but I just feel like Weapon Power Idris is so good yes. against uh, CP Sky. And he's good against Samuel as well yeah. if he can get the initial damage down. This is very risky stuff coming out from Elite 8. Game 2 of this Spring Live Championship. Elite 8 on the back foot as Impunity are 1-0 up and once more they're sticking to their guns they believe double CP is where it's at. Well, first, we're going to have to prove it. This is one of the regions that I've seen the most double CP come through, and generally it's been with Sky or Alpha. Both of those have kind of rounded out double CP compositions over here in Southeast Asia. But yeah, I just I just really like Idris into CP Sky, and I think Weapon Power Sky generally fares a bit better. Anime Save Me is one of the better players, you know, that they wanted to sub in here, and that brings the Lance to the table. Lance can be one of those captains that can single-handedly seal a game for you with the right Impales and Githian Walls, so we'll have to see how he fares on this particular hero. They're going to have to play very, very safely at range and make sure they play perfectly to win conditions. Spaghetti, though, senses an opportunity to steal some away. These back camps going to set it up so the Supernova splash onto all three, and I think he might even get away with it before anime, uh, before the official hind hits the scene. Going to be a risky one. He is backing. Oh, the Gatling gun hits him on the four barrage. Series strike over. There should be official Hein finding himself a first blunt, but Spaghetti is still alive, surviving. Core collapse. Oh, my goodness, Spaghetti. He's going to fall. He's going to get back. Oh, they've just let him escape. Spaghetti, the grand escape. Wow, I almost feel like official Hein was a little bit too respectful of Spaghetti there. He was on low energy. He would have needed to hit a supernova to get the kill there and a couple more basic attacks actually might have finished him off. Super respectful, but maybe too respectful there coming out of uh, official Hein, and already Hun Jaeger starting to take a little bit of damage. It's more interesting that obviously it's actually Samuel in lane here, because we've actually seen um, an opening of CP Sky in the lane, which has actually been very successful for the European scene. But obviously Samuel has also been a very good laner too, so it's kind of just pick and choose as you will. Spaghetti contesting, loses as official Hein picks it up, but it does actually get stunned, and now he's being chased down. Yeah, look at this. Spaghetti just going to lead on. Auto attacks toward Barrage will create the gap necessary, and Anime Save Me was coming in to provide the backup. I do think that Samuel is a better pick into Idris in the lane. The Mouse and Verdicts make things very hard. If you're playing very aggressively on Samuel, Idris does tend to find it a little bit hard to walk up to the CS and, and mm. land those last hits. However, paired with a Lyra, a Quad of War, and it is going to be uh, able to provide a lot of healing. And speaking of healing, yesterday we saw Quad of War neglect to get a fountain, went down a very unique Lyra build to provide the max heal he could possibly do in an Imperial Sigil. Seems that he may be doing something very similar. I don't think he's going to avoid the fountain for long because it's a double CP and fountain gives you. Uh, uh, Phantom gives you a lot of shielding. Let's go official Heinz Court here. He He's is caught. Def Q. Oh, it's going to be Spaghetti finding first blood here. Impunity strike first. And this game, uh, they're playing a little bit differently, aren't they, Scoundrel? A little bit more safer and, and a little bit more uh, respectful. They don't want to give any leads over. They found enemy save me hiding out in the jungle. Pops his boots here. Quad of War chases on down, but they're not going to find a kill. Uh, here comes uh, Quad of War just trying to move into lane. Def Q doing his job against Hun Jaegers right now. 32 CS to 38, a small advantage over to Def Q at this point in time, who piloting this Idris fairly well. Again, like we said, it's a bit respectful of the early game here this time round, Impunity. They've been 
a little bit more, but that is a lot of damage coming down to Def Q from Hun Jaeger. has got to be careful of that drifting Dark Malice Inverter because uh, Idris, you just do not have high HP to, to, uh, to values as this hero. He's not the particularly tankiest hero in the game, which is why he kind of likes to get in and dodge damage as opposed to have to brawl it out. Yeah, certainly. When he starts getting into the life still, the poison shift comes through and you can see that they've already opted into double shielding on Def Q because he just knows he's going up against a double CP composition. It is going to be pretty hard to take mm. him down, but now Sorrow Blade uh, completed for Def Q. Divergent's paths unlocked. His Shroud Step now turns into a blink and it's going to allow him a lot of repositional ability. Yeah, exactly. Could have dodged through the... Uh Suri strikes, the four barrages, the Malice and Verdicts, gets all of those. Looks like there's a big siege going on to the first tier turret here for Elite Eight. We could see a fight break out. Def Q dives forward, he gets the shielding, that's a big stun. Official Hind takes a lot of damage, but Spaghetti takes it all on all. The Imperial Sigil, Quadavoir, baited Spaghetti to go back in, and Hun Jaegers finds a Malice and Verdict to the face. Well, yeah, well, I think he thought he might die regardless, moves back, but obviously the Malice and Verdict did the work. And now Elite Eight. Maybe giving up a bit of pressure on this turret though. Def Q nearly level 6. Quadavoir is. They have that arcane portal out. That's a nice blink. Gets you out of the impale. No, it's Quadavoir is 4. I need yeah. glasses. I need glasses. It's <laughs> alright. I was wondering if... Uh... My vision has been getting slowly worse over the last year, so... I did have glasses, but I just never wear them. Unfortunate. Right. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> Unlucked, mate. You're turning old. You're an yeah, old man it's just now. Old. It's just getting old, isn't it? It is getting old. Apparently, according to my optician, it was too many computer games. Oh, yeah? There you go. <laughs> That's the thing. Speaking of pu computer games, we're here to, to, to cast a, a, a beautiful final between uh, Elite 8 and Punity. Hanyega's taking a bit of damage. Solar Storm, that's a lot of damage all of a sudden, but he's staying alive. Hey, official Heiner, however, he's will what, not <laughs> stay alive. As an anime save me, diving on in, it roots him in place. That means a bit of damage can go their way. And now with Spaghetti in lane, Defku throws that Chakram out. There's a lot of damage available to that turret. Will go very low, and the Minion Wave's pushing in. Will Impunity go for it now? Yeah, I think they should. I think it's fairly easy to get. Anime saved me trying to buy time. Here comes Han Yeager's from the side. Drifting Dark goes down, but that turret goes out to Def Q. He wants in. He's diving onto Anime Save Me. Does, of course, have his Shimmer Strike to jump onto an ally or even an enemy if necessary. Def Q wanting to go forward. The Oblivion keeps him in place. Blinks to the other side. Death from above. He needs to dive into Quadavoir. He dives into Han Yeager's. Tries to get the Shaker and Blink going, but it just does not happen. And that's going to be him falling down. Quadavoir now has to dance left and right to avoid everything flying at his face and unfortunately he cannot avoid everything. Two kills over to Elite Eight. Yeah, and now the siege is coming through but already Spaghetti is there. Fountain is up and available for Anime Save Me. And just like an anime, the protagonist of his team came back to save the day after that turret siege. Can they get a resounding victory after getting this turret down as well? They have the siege potential. There's a lot of supernovas set up around those minions, but it doesn't look like Spaghetti wants to go for it. Solar Storm comes through. Yeah, the death from above meant that Spaghetti couldn't follow up, really. Mm. And that is the turret falling down and Elite Eight a buy back into this game, but it is still a thousand gold in favor of Impunity. Nah, still, again, Impunity's early game showing some signs of weakness. Need to get towards that mid-late game where they have shone so brilliantly in the finals. Looks like Tension Bow comes through. Big item spike there for Def Q. Not yet bought boots, by the way. Interesting little tidbit there. I Dowsy looking at me and shaking his head like he thinks he should have bought boots. I definitely think mobility is super important to the Idris, but two item spikes here. Not too much gold to invest in boots. Probably can buy up a cup here now. Quadavar still avoiding that fountain. Quite heavily yeah. got himself another Dragon's Heart in his inventory. What will he convert that into? He should get it next, right? No, he shouldn't because he's got a Dragon. Oh, I mean, yeah, I have no idea. Um, maybe go towards a contraption, that's what he did last time. He's got the energy battery, so that's probably where he'll go. The thing is, you're against double CP, so you want to build items that have health, but also shielding, right? Our fountain has that. Yeah, that's, that, that's, 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 why, that's the point I'm trying to make. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> I thought you were trying to make the counterpoint, and I was like, what? <laughs> Fischl Hine takes a huge chunk of damage. It does look like Elite Eight have to run. Solar Storm going to come on through, hits into Anime Save Me, throws out a Giffian's Wall. Quadavoir dives forward, that is going to be a lot of damage traded on back, and Def Q jumps in to find the flow. He jumps back out, easy peasy for Impunity here. Now we'll have to see what they can get from it. I think delaying Fountain is good in a lot of scenarios, but 
I mean, this one, there's so much team-wide damage that can take place. I just feel like Fountain would have been a great choice for Quad Ivoire because it gives you both shielding, a lot of regeneration to your team. Um, but what this does allow is to make picks because you're probably going to have a contraption soon, which will give you vision dominance and making picks as Celeste and... Uh, oh, he steals he it! He steals it! He steals it with the oh. empowered drifting Dark Malice inverted combination. A bit of a mistake there from Elite 8 and a bit of luck on Hun Jaeger's side. Yeah, mistake from Impunity, definitely. Letting a little bit too much go, in my opinion, here. They're letting a little bit too much go over to Elite Eight at this point in time. Giving away too many things. They can't. Bra I don't think they can brawl as effectively. And again, you know, the, the interesting thing about not having a fountain here is you have to group up on that Lyra heal. You don't really want to group up against a Samuel and a Sky because it makes hitting their skills that much easier. I really so, so while I agree with this against the Cruel, I'm not sure I agree with this this time round. Yeah, no, I think that's why I, what the, the point that I, I, we're trying to make is that you are against double CP. Interestingly enough, Hanyeka is going to opt in for a Eve of Harvest on the Samuel. Seems a little bit counterintuitive. We know that Southeast Asia love that Eve of Harvest, but we'll talk about it in a second as Defku's diving in, looking for an kill. Solar Storm comes out, rips through anime, save me, but there's just so much poke available to the side of Elite 8. Hanyeka is the main target, but Defku's just not quite finding it. Dives onto anime, save me. Shakram flying left and right and center. Oh, diving away, and he will be able to get out of this one alive as it is Elite eight trying to chase forward and spaghetti is in the midst of it quad of wire goes low that's going to be an impale landing and that's going to be the kill going over to quad of uh, hun jaegers def q though gets himself a heal but it's just not enough dives forward and hun jaegers will take that one away spaghetti last man standing going to try and try and find a kill he does get one but he goes down in the end it's an ace for elite Eight and impunity biting off more than it can chew. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the major issue there, and again, Fountain finally comes. There we go. Quite a far had the same idea. Definitely feels like he needs it. I feel like the problem is with the uh, the sigil that you're seeing here, especially in that last fight. Elite Eight can just focus all their abilities into the sigils, and you don't even get the healing from it because you're forced away from it to not take damage. And I think I think that's now what Quite has realised and has kind of not delayed it any further, realising it's absolutely necessary to have that kind of point and or just bottom press healing the get out of jail free card in this kind of composition because it could provide that element of extra HP needed for either Def Q or Spaghetti to find those finishing blows. So I actually feel like Def Q has made a bit of a mistake in his itemization on Idris. I right. honestly prefer Poison Shift first, Tension Bow last. In the latest updates that people have found that Tension Bow as a last item is actually quite effective and isn't as necessary as a first item pick anymore. But another fight breaking out here as it is going to be Spaghetti laying down the core collapse but he's taking so much poke in the process. Def Q trying to get some kills. Solar Storm going to come through, but Def Q just goes down. He has literally no sustain and he's just so vulnerable to diving on in. Playing this Idris in a very risky way. Official Hind dives forward, but the Fort Barrage will not connect or slow. Impunity need to, to realize that diving onto a composition that's going to throw massive amounts of uh, you know, artillery at your face is, is not where you want to be. You've got a Celeste with an overdrip. It almost feels like they're trying to innovate too much. Yes. Like, do, you know what, do you know what I mean by saying that? I feel like they're trying to do too much innovation. That build from Quad d'Ivoire, it had its merits in the game against Cruel, but there again, you now get double splash damage, double ranged. It's very difficult to make use of the Imperial Sigil in the same way, and obviously Quad d'Ivoire agrees because he's now decided to go, instead of going for Contraption, obviously going now for the, uh, the Fountain to give themselves that little extra get-out-of-jail-free card in the team Fights. As soon as Def Q finishes this poison shift, going to be in a much stronger position, a much more comfortable position on the address to be able to sustain a little bit in the, these uh, drawn out fights. Spaghetti has uh, quite a uh, diverse way he can go as far as his build is concerned. Historically, we've seen him go into uh, a lot of PS, but here we go. That's Def Q diving in and he has that poison shift. There's the barrel through the portal, but they're not following up. Spaghetti doesn't want to get close. Has, of course, that upgrade. Oh, whoa, whoa, Def whoa. Q steps on in, uses that shimmer strike, gets the shout step he's away he will fall in the end but he gets down at least one in his process and actually now spaghetti can just continue the artillery with these helo genesis and just create a minefield that official hind has to navigate yeah i think if i were to trade a sky and a celeste no one i'd much prefer the sky at uh, the celeste lyra than the sky lance really oh, really good attack it should get it it should get it there we go and atlas won't save you my friend I guess you just put it for the, uh, the the cinematic effect. Official Hind goes down. It isn't an ace. If, uh, Hun Jaegers is here, and he's going to try and push everyone back. Quad of Wire is actually in a bit of trouble here, as the Crystal Sentry is getting involved. Lays down the Imperial Sigil, gives him healing. Is it enough? He's dodging away from these sigils. Puts out the Bright Bulwark, and that will be enough to get Quad of Wire out of range. 
If uh, Hanyegas was to continue chasing, which he is, DefQ could come in and just assassinate him. Tension bow there. Look at the damage. Shakram flies through and Quadifar with a uh, cheeky still. Now that we see the uh, poison shift there, not only are you limiting the Samuel sustain with the Eve of Harvest and the Fountain, you're also giving yourself a little bit of sustain to the kit. You see what a difference it makes to DefQ's team fighting ability. This is why we suggested poison shift to come out before that tension bow. Yes, sorrow blade to hit your um, spike, but I actually would have loved to have seen poison shift even come out first. I don't necessarily think that divergent paths is super critical to the way that you want to play. So I know Dalcy disagrees, but I don't think it's majorly critical. I think I would have much preferred to just limit Samuel's healing more than anything. But I definitely think it should have been there before the tension bow, regardless. Unless they were looking to burst specifically. The problem is that it's very difficult as a Celeste to follow up on the burst of the Idris, because usually you're just, especially pre-level 8, way too far away to make it happen. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. This is something that, as someone who... I've played Idris a lot, and I play Idris with people who are trying to follow up on my calls, because yeah. I'm diving on people's faces, and they're just like, you cannot follow up an Idris. If yeah. Idris wants to go places, he goes places. He goes where he pleases, doesn't he? Yeah. And a team it struggles to follow Idris down his route, so you have to be very careful about the engages you take. You have to be very purposeful. You either dance, in and out, mm. uh, the the in and out store style from Idris, um, or you, you don't because you, you can't your team can't follow up uh, very easily. So you can see here, Impunity really looking to take like very specific engages. Quatrefoy has already used his portal by the way. 15 seconds till the next one. So they, they the the way the main way we've seen Impunity run these fights is they wait for that portal to be up to deliver Idris to the backline without having to let him go through all of the frostburn poke. Uh, you know, through from the um, Hunyegas and Official Hive. He needs to get to that backline instantaneously. So you can see, for the most part, trying to sustain and then just waiting for that immediate direct delivery. Can't wait to see what DefQ uh, overdrives as his second ability. My suggestion would be Shroud Step because he's needing to have high mobility, yeah. so he wants to have that off cooldown as soon as possible. His auto attacks uh, reduce the cooldown. Every auto attack reduces it by a, a portion of a second. Um, uh, but if he overdrives it, the cooldown uh, becomes even more so, so that he can have it up more often. If he goes into Shimmer Strike, it means that the Shimmer Strike is off cooldown very often, but you, you're realistically not going to get two Shimmer Strikes in a team no, fight, no, so it exactly. doesn't actually mean anything. Think. And, and once you've dodged one set of abilities, I mean, you, what are you actually trying to dodge here? Like four barrage and malice ability, they're up all the time, right? So it's, it's more about do dodging one crucial one in a team fight and then sticking to the target and getting them killed. Maybe you can dodge an impale, right? But again, that's up very, very often. So there's nothing like super critical that you want to dodge, you would say, on the side of Elite Eight. Maybe like the Oblivion, maybe the Death Rebuff, but that can be done with the Crucible, right? And Quatrefoy has got that. So you want to be able to keep to your target more more specifically than trying to dodge literally everything that's being thrown at you. So And he has overdriven the uh, child step. So uh, good peace of mind to, to, to understand what he needs to do, the playstyle he needs to take in this game to, to make the Idris work. Elite 8 being forced back into the jungle. It is 17 minutes. There's a portal. Hanyegas has possibly been caught, but a late follow through and Hanyegas still alive. That's quite a while taking so much damage in the process. Defku going to dive forward, try and do the work, but the Atlas comes out to slow down his attack speed. Inside the Imperial Sigil, going to heal up. Elite 8 haven't quite found the burst they need. Solar Storm comes through, but it misses. And then not enough damage is there. Defku, he's trying to come in. That's a fountain burnt but the Mortal Wounds will cut down some of that healing onto uh, the single targets. And Bolivian going to catch Death Q alive. He is in so much trouble, but he's going to dive forward. He wants Hanyegas and Hanyegas he'll have. It's a double full spaghetti. Official hind, last man standing, trying his best. We'll find uh, the Celeste spaghetti fours, but now he has to find Death Q, and Death Q can just jump right over. Oh, that's lovely usage of the tree to provide a barrier, and it forces Death Q to cut out his attack. Quite a lot could have used his portal, by the way. Yes. That was back up and available. They could have jumped over the wall and delivered directly to the sky. De a journey boot's now completed for DefQ. He's going to have so much mobility in fights every 12 seconds. He will be popping those for a huge p movement speed. And these fights have been pretty extended. Clockwork for Spaghetti, by the way. Clockwork coming up him. We saw him go the, tr the double piercing shard build because there was Aegises to contend with on the targets that he wanted to kill for for previously. But there are no Aegises this time round. So you you're more than happy to go for the clockwork and just deal extra um, flat damage. Oh, oh, look at this. Wow, that's so risky from DefQ, but he's going to pop those journey boots trying to escape. Here comes the Solar Storm. DefQ dealing with anime, save me. And he will fall down to the auto attack. Quite a while, though, able to find the kill onto official hind whilst this was all being played out. Now has to find his own escape, though. Hanyega's laying down the damage. Going to try and get the speed from the Imperial Sigil, but the Frostburn just doing so much work, and he goes down. That's a shutdown, but... 
with it just being a Samuel and a Lance, there's really not much that Elite 8 can get for that. I'm very confused as to why he didn't just run towards the middle there instead of cho choosing to circle back around the back camps. I know maybe you thought Lance is going, but I would much prefer to walk into a Lance than to walk into a Samuel. You can see Elite 8, they, they don't want to start up the Kraken. It, it, Samuel takes it so slowly, yeah, it would be a massive, a massive risk. And again, playing against Spaghetti, who's got the Solar Storm up, that's a little bit more of a risk to do so as well. So, you know, the long range there of the uh, Heliogenesis is too much to risk going for the Kraken right now. This is... I don't like this. Steph Q's going down crit, he's going a full damage Idris build. In my hundreds of games of Idris, I found I do more damage output with three items rather than four items because you sustain with more uh, defense. You're against a double CP composition. You can build double Aegis or you could build a, another shielding item to give yourself more shielding another against fountain. this. Another fountain. Yeah, it, okay. it, it, I, this, I, I, I'm not a fan. I understand why you would want to do it. Crit, definitely understandable because you're trying to blow someone up and, uh, and assassinate them. But uh, I've, I've done the, the research on damage and it, three damage items does more damage because you survive longer. Okay, Quadovar looking for a potential portal over the wall here. Gets caught out there. Split right now, Dalsi. Quadovar is split. This forward barrage keeping him in bay. Def you're going to dive on in. That's a lot of damage onto Fischl High and trying to find the kill, but he cannot do so. And he's taking a lot of damage in the process. Solar Storm rips through Hun Jaegers, but that's going to be Def locked down against the wall. Dives on cross, and Spaghetti's able to find Hun Jaegers. Def in trouble. Anime save me trying to find the kill. The heal, it's coming through. Is it? Def gets out alive. Going to try and get into that Imperial Sigil, but he cannot risk it. Anime save me trying to escape the Celeste, trying to save himself. And he will be able to do so. Crystal Sentry goes down. Def Q flanking. Gonna dive on in. And that's Annihilation. That is the kills coming through. Official Heinz goes down. And with just Anime Save Me Alive, Imperiality going to start up this Kraken. That Crystal Sentry has been the bane of Impunity's life. I feel like if they focused that Crystal Sentry more in the early game and the mid game, they would never have these problems trying to take fights in the enemy oh jungle. No. But Anime saved me. No way. He steals oh, the, the Kraken. Kraken. What the? That is a huge error coming out of Impunity. Oh my word. They had the burst from the Supernova as well. Lance is like the Kraken stealing machine in the captain role, but that was insane. The sub <laughs> comes in. And they don't even get the kill. That is salt in the wound. Impunity. Uh, they now have to do with this Kraken. They have to deal with the Kraken. They have to deal with the Onslaught. There's a lot of good siege. They don't have any health either. They might just have to back. They might just have to back here. They might. It is going to be quite a while. Rooted on up. He has himself the Arcane Pass. Who doesn't have it up. He cannot escape. So much harass coming onto him. That's another Impale. He uses the Fountain on himself trying to heal up. Hun Jaeger's very close. Here comes Def Q looking for the kill and Hun Jaeger's caught in the Brits of it. Can he find the last auto attack to get it? No, and Impale saves the life. But the Chakram does the work. Double kill comes through and now it's time to take this Kraken. Oh, they're going to siege onto the Kraken. They will take it down before this next turret goes through. But that is way, way too hard for Impunity to deal with right now because Elite 8 that was sealed if they took that Kraken. Elite 8 were out of this game, but that is a sub coming in and giving them a shred of hope. I still think Impunity are in the commanding lead right now, especially now Tornado Trigger was the choice for Def Q. Like a lot of crit, a lot of attack speed on top of what he's already got as well. Have to see if he can make it work. I, I, I'm still in favor of more defense. By the way, Tension Bow and Quatervoir. Uh, what, what, what do you make of that? I, I don't know what to make of that. I'm starstruck. Wow, this is a big dive onto official Hind. This new minion wave to support Impunity as they try to take down this choke point turret, currently having to force themselves back. Well, I, where's, what's the tension bow I for? I, I don't know. I don't feel like... Um, I think this is, again, one of those <laughs> one of those situations where you may be just innovating if a little you, if too you, much. If you wanted to get an item, get a bone saw. And then you can or even at, a least apply at least a poison shiv. A poison shiv as well on Lyra. Yeah. Like, if he's trying to pierce armor, then... What the bones will allow you to do is stack up um, the armor shred so that Def Q has an easier time doing damage to a target. There is, you know, some armor on the There's field. A little, bit more of, a little bit more of long range burst, I guess. That, that maybe that extra little bit of burst is all that Def Q needs to find the executing blow. And that's the thing. If Def Q wanted to go for damage items, then a bone saw would have been my preferred choice. Yes, he has a tension bow, but the, everyone on the enemy team of Elite 8 has armor. If you have. There's an echo as well, by the way. <laughs> Let's go. Quite I mean, a a, a double, double, double heal could be really double impactful. Double portal, double portal. You know, like really get to the back double line. Double heal. It's definitely. Double I think heal. it's definitely double heal, though. Yeah. 
Wow, this is insane stuff coming out of Quad of War. Impunity, though, struggling to close out this game. They've got themselves a 5,000 gold lead, but that Kraken steal from Anime Save Me has kept Elite 8 alive and kicking. Lots of poke going down. That's going to be a solar storm, and Official Heinz loses his life. Anime Save Me gets caught up in a core collapse, trying his best to get out as well. And Impunity now going to turn around. They, they, could, they could portal, they could echo and portal again if they really wanted to on the back of this turret. Oh, let's have a look. It's going to be the turret falling very low. It does go down. Well, they can't Impunity. echo and portal because they've already used. Oh, okay. That's a jump across. That's going to be Atlas on to Def Q. He's trying to do the work. He just doesn't really have the damage. I lied to you. They'd actually used abilities after the portal, obviously, so couldn't use the echo straight away. But yeah, they didn't use it that fight there. So they may be looking in one of those, like you said, desperation. Bright Bulwark could be used to really limit movement, by the way. Bright Bulwark, Echo, Bright Bulwark. Sentry eliminated. Finally, Finally. the main of Impunity has gone, but they are starting up this Kraken. Man, two steals this game. Gold Miner went over to Hunyagers. Kraken went over to Anime Save Me on the back of some steals. This time Impunity are going to try and deal with the threat to begin with, and the Solar Storm will definitely help out, but Def Q just does not have enough damage with his current build to find assassination potential. Now he has to dive away and get a heal of his own. It is Impunity turning around, trying to get away from here. Def Q lays down a bit of damage, but there's the Ford Barrage doing work, and he's stun locked up, taken on down by official Hines. Quanavar in the midst of it has that echo. In fact, he's used it for all the double heal. It just wasn't enough. All by himself trying to find the kill, but he goes down. It's a double for official Hines, and Spaghetti is forced now onto the retreat. That's it. Um, I mean, that's something I've noticed from Quanavar is he holds onto his fountain for so long in these fights. <laughs> That was so, so close. close. Are they going to be tempted not to take this crack? And it looks like Sky and Samuel are going to start it up. Spaghetti is the only one that can stop this right now. Whether he wants to is the question that we should ask ourselves, though. It's Spaghetti versus the world. He doesn't have Solar Storm again. He's got to wait 23 seconds, and that is a Kraken going down very quickly here. Uh, Impunity are certainly looking for revenge here. Excoundrel is the supernova. Is that a pit there? He looks for the burst, but it's going to be Elite 8 unleashing the Kraken, and Spaghetti loses his life. This could be Elite 8 making a comeback here, and again, I've got to question some of the item choices from Quadavar. The fountains held on too long in these fights. This is going to be a big defense from Impunity right this time round, and Elite Eight could actually find themselves in this series, not somewhere that I think Impunity expected to be. This is just a turret push. This is going to be so difficult. They've got 33 seconds. I don't know if Impunity can defend this. Me neither. Def Q is doing his best to lay down the damage. Hon Jaegers, though, is certainly sustaining through it all. Look at the damage coming out of Fischl Hein. Here comes Def Q. Half helps Hon Jaegers, but now he needs to escape and get heals of his own. Spaghetti is 16 seconds off recalling, and Def Q is certainly low. Takes down Hon Jaegers, but Quadavar cannot afford to lose his life. Portals to safety. Spaghetti coming up as soon as this turret is destroyed. Over, they have to fall back here. They have to be so careful Elite 8. Spaghetti, Solar Storm comes through, but Quadavar taking so much damage. His official Hine just dancing around. This Kraken still doing work, and Quadavar is so close to losing, losing his life. Spaghetti, Minefield, Solar Storm, can he find the kill? Official Hine will be forced to retreat, but there is the Kraken taking down this final Vein Crystal turret. He's been called back in. He's looking to finish the game. The Kraken boiling away. That is falling down. Quadavar dives in, looking to take down Official Hein all by himself, while Spaghetti is almost out of energy. Def Q about to come up. They've taken down the Vein Crystal, and Elite Eight going to find Game Two of this series. This is not what we expected when we started this series. We expected Impunity to roll through, but what a great game from Elite Eight. I've got to say, uncharacteristic mistakes creeping into Impunity, and I definitely think maybe. Like we said, innovation taken a bit too far. There's a thin line between a mad inventor and a scientist. And, you know, here we go. Impunity looking to put their foot down in this final. If they lose a game here, suddenly they are one win away, or one loss away from Elite Eight being the team that qualifies for Worlds. And how insane would that be? A team that isn't that Impunity roster winning a Southeast Asian Championship and Elite Eight. What a deserving team to do so after really piloting this double CP. They are going to pilot hit here again, obviously. I feel like Lance would have been better if they were trying to make it work, though. I, I don't... This is a little bit better at being aggressive. This is a better aggressive composition for the CP for the CP ones because you've obviously got that afterburn, which is a little bit longer range than the Impale, and you can pick off targets. But peeling-wise, not quite as good. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you on that one, Excoundrel. Game three of this best of five series. It's tied up one apiece. Impunity, the reigning Southeast Asian Championships of all time.
but now Elite 8 are binding their way into this series, going to look to try and challenge that score. DefQ in lane with Quatevoir. Quatevoir starting with double shielding and minion candy here. Very heavy push in the lane. Yes. Uh, they're going to... Well, it's, it's also perhaps to stop the push. There's a lot of siege potential. DefQ takes a huge chunk of damage here as well. Yeah. Uh, the minion candy can be used to push or to counter the push mm. that comes out. And since Elite 8 have so much range, I feel like they're going to look to try and push. It's something that we saw them do yesterday against Popeyes. They love to push turrets. They love to siege turrets. And so you get that minion candy, you try and shut it down as soon as possible. Quanafar going to come in. Oh, that's a lot of damage up to Han Yeager. They're going to look for the kill. They find it. First blood goes over to Def Q. Anime Sabi should be all right to escape this one. But a nice turnaround. Nice play from Impunity. The reason I like the thin, by the way, in this double CP competition is the ability to provide shielding stats to your allies, the polite company, the double shielding coming down from Quatavar. They must have anticipated this in the draft because it's something they have done against double CP before as well. Anime Save Me looking for an afterburn. Not the best decision. A lot of damage comes down from Def Q, but here comes when Jaegers to the rescue. Drifting Dark and Malice and Verdict will help ward away that impunity roster. And Spaghetti again farming up pretty heavily here. He is certainly farming up as heavily as possible. Going to look to try and get those Elder Treants for himself. Official High comes into lane, something that he did very often in his series. Tension Bow first item for Def Q. Uh, definitely a viable pick. Usually. Hey, that's an old school build. Usually, the time you see it in the, the most recent updates is when you're against a Gwen and you just yeah. try and match the, the, the Tension Bow power spike. It's a bit interesting in this uh, in this particular example, though. Yeah, it's a bit of an old school build for Ringo, but obviously, Tension Bow hit uh, a little bit of a buff in update 2.4, so it got up to 10% flat armor appears as opposed to 8%, so it gives you slightly more damage on that initial hit. But this is definitely something that's a bit older in terms of uh, in terms of what Ringo used to do. Ringo's maybe about a year and a half ago would go tension bow first item and just run away with the early game, kind of win within eight minutes. So let's see what Impunity have got lined up for us here. Yeah, it's going to be Spaghetti knocked sideways, but Anime Save Me is the one under fire. The Helo Genesis landing on top of this glaive. Spaghetti looking to put as much pressure down. Official Hind is just off to the side here, but spotted out by Spaghetti there. It means that there's no potential threat really from this Sky. No. Again, Sky doing uh, Heavy Prism here, not stacking those crystal bits like we often see a lot of Skies do. Official Hind wants to move very quickly towards his Tier 3 item. Could be a Frostburn, like the Frostburn against the Finn. Soaks up a lot of damage, makes it easy to slow him down. You can stack those broken myths later on in the game on him when he is slowed. Hun Jaeger's look, he's working towards uh, Eve of Harvest first, which has been that classic Southeast Asian build. Tends to be their first item of choice of most of their CP carries. Spaghetti also Heavy Prism working towards a Tier 3. I would like to see a Frostburn come out on Spaghetti, though. I would like to see that as a difference from last game. I, I definitely think slowing down the targets, especially for Idris last game, would have been critical. Um, so I really would like to see a Frostburn considered. Double Heavy Prism, though. For Spaghetti, just going for that flat damage right now. Yeah, no, and, and considering the fact that his inventory is full, he does have a flare that he can get rid of to, to open up some slots. He uh, is likely to probably go towards uh, something. Um, uh, you, you expect Eve of Harvest, right? It's just so standard. But we'll see. Hun Jaegers, wow, so much damage coming out. Def Q, though, it's all been turned on. And Spaghetti is so struggling to escape. A single auto attack will find the kill. But he's too deep under the turret and official high and just will not be able to find it. This is risky though, Spaghetti. Getting a bit greedy, wants to heal up on this Treant and official high and could get in there but cannot. The Treant goes down very quickly, gets the heal and it means there's no real route for official high and to get in. Now Spaghetti can come back into the lane, clear out this wave pretty quickly with the supernova and make sure this turret is unthreatened. Impunity again, struggling to respect that Samuel's damage output with the uh, Malice and Verdict with the uh, Drifting Bark Dark awesome. here, a lot of damage coming down. I think they need to start thinking about countering the Samuel specifically. The damage from Def Q though, that critical strike with Tension Bow by the way, that's kind of what you see. That oh, first is, he's going, is that an Aftershock? Oh, is he I going just, on I, hit from Def Q I, on this, uh, this No, rainbow? Aftershock doesn't build out of... Um, no, it doesn't build out of Heavy Prism. It doesn't prison. build out of Heavy Prism, but what it, he could be going towards is a Shatter Glass. And then we have like Burst Ringo, so like Tension Bow for the hit. And then Shutter Glass for the ultimate deals with squishy targets quite well. This is not the time to innovate, boys. This is the time to win games. This is Def Q being knocked into the turret. Does go very low, and the turret actually finds the kill in the end as well. Hun Jaegers goes very low. The fountain will keep him alive for now, but Spaghetti is under fire. Forward barrage. That polite company keeps him alive. Just about the fortified health coming down. Quadavoir 
is just skirting around the edge of this death from above. But Elite 8 starting to take the lead Triple in heavy. this game. They are looking to take this turret now. Quadavoir trying to hold it, but in fact, he is going very low. Taken down. Anime saving with the Krill credit. Spaghetti comes in. That's going to be a Solar Storm sniping away Hun Jaegers and should cancel out this turret siege as well. But very curious things. There's a heavy prism. He's going yeah. after shock. Uh, no. Def Q is going after shock. He's not because he's got eclipse prism. And oh, heavy okay. Prism. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's confusing. <laughs> like you can't, you can't really think about where he's going because there's no point thinking about where he's going. We'll just find out when we get there. It's like it's, <laughs> it's like a, one it's of those a journey. It's like it's one of those wild rides. We just have to assume that it's a, it's a thing. Def Q again overextending. I've got to say, anime save me has been a massive saving grace here for Elite Eight. He has been fantastic with those afterburns, instantaneous on the right target every time. Well, you know, if you can't beat him, join him. Double CP. Just with, a with a just a tension bow added in. Why not? Why not? It's uh, very curious things coming out of Impunity here. And currently, Elite 8 seem to be feeding off this momentum they found. Spaghetti knocked. And that's another kill. Anime saved me. Just MVP so far this game. Finding afterburn after afterburn. And the turret's going to fall. This has been insane from Elite 8. It's like a team renewed. They bring in their sub, the double CP. And if this goes to another game, you know, for 2-1 to Elite 8, I think Impunity have to stop thinking about weird ways to beat Samuel and just pick something that beats Samuel. Like a, a Black Feather attacker, uh, Koshka, which we know Spaghetti has played with great aggression before. Need You need to go back to basics. You can't afford to keep trying to invent something. This is not this is not inventing time. This is this is time to, to play things that win. And I've got to give massive credit to Anime Save Me. He's been fantastic on this glaive. He's already got two items. He's got the Crucible there for the, um, for the Finn already. He has been a pivotal member of this Elite Eight team to find the kills and find the setups where necessary. He's been involved in every single kill so far. And this double CP is something that Elite Eight bringing out here and it doesn't feel like Impunity actually have an answer for it. Well, Def Q has gone down that Shadow Glass like you mentioned. So, yeah, as you said, if you can't beat them, join them. Let's go double CP. Ourselves, Impunity in a trouble though as Spaghetti gets knocked. That's him just going to drop immediately. Great Oblivion puts Def Q asleep and I feel he's going to struggle to escape. Anime save me. Throws the fountain out. Gets pulled back into turret range. But Quadavoir cannot really find mm. the return damage yeah. necessary to snipe away this glaive. Need crucibles need reflex blocks. Those, I mean, those are just free afterburns right now. As soon as someone steps up within afterburn range, Anime save me goes in and makes it happen. This is just... It, this is stuff that... You know, I, I teach people on YouTube. This is like... This is, this is stuff that, you know, if, you're, if you were getting hit by these afterburns over and over again, you need something to block them. And Quanavar doesn't look like he's anywhere close to building to a Crucible. I mean, he's got an Ocart, and then he's got Shielding, and then, a, and then a, an Hourglass. Spaghetti and, and DefQ need their own reflex blocks. Yeah, he's going Contraption on this uh, Finn by the looks of things, like Scoundrel. Yeah. Cooldown reduction, uh, meaning he can put out but it's more not, shields. It's just not the right item. Impunity. Curious scenes. A thousand and a half gold behind as we speak, like Scoundrel. And yeah, no, it is. Looking very curious. That's going to be an Eve of Harvest complete. Hunyagers went down Frostburn before the Eve yeah. of Harvest. This is great adaptation coming out of Elite 8 as they're just completely adapting their play styles. The things that have just become norm over the weekend starting to change things up so that they can have the best chance the, of finding the themselves The Frostburn elite. is excellent though because it slows down those targets. When they get after burned in, they get slowed down when they make it into the fray and suddenly they get pounded by all that CP damage. It's just, uh, yes, it's not looking healthy right now for Impunity. Here goes another afterburn. Yeah, knocks Def Q. Not quite the right direction. Solar Storm comes out. That's going to be a great pull in. Hanyega's down to half HP, but look at Quadavoir just melting away. Throws out the Polite Company, the uh, Fountain as well, to keep him alive. Here comes the... the there is a, uh, a Hellfire Brew for Ringo right now. Yeah, Def Q, he's running out of energy. He has to throw it now or never, essentially. Official Hind getting pretty close. Def Q down to half HP. Anime Savvy coming in. That's Official Hind getting very close, but that... Hilo Genesis keeps everyone at bay. Quite a while though, he's playing a risky game and Hanyaga's going to show him why. Def Q trying to escape Official Heinz Barrage and he will be able to for now, but here comes the Hellfire Brew. Finally, oh, it's going to hit two. It's going to hit main targets. Burning away Hanyaga's, but it's just not enough damage to find the kill onto Anime Save Me. I think Hanyaga's, nope, he goes down. The burn was enough to find the kill onto him. Yeah, they're going to need their reflex block. Hanyaga's has got one. Official Heinz has got one. There was a Crucible. Right now, decisions are just better from, from Elite 8, in, in my honest opinion. Uh, we Maybe when we get to late game, this actually works into Impunity's favour, but 
I think Quatafar might be heading towards a, uh, a reflex block, a, a crucible right now, because there is sorely needed. Somebody needs some reflex block, because if Anime Save Me finds anybody out of position, uh, an afterburn just puts a key target in the firing line, and you can't afford to have that happen. Spaghetti has picked his up. DefQ has been able to maintain enough range that he hasn't been the target. It definitely, I agree with the fact that Spaghetti is more of the crucial target to have that afterburn, uh, that afterburn block on in the form of the reflex block. Where is DefQ going next? This is an alternating current. Yeah, this is things. an alternating current. He's basically playing CP Ringo, but just wanted to have a, a tension bow for a bit of early game pressure, which he didn't manage to achieve. It, it, is it that they decided they were going double CP from the beginning, or was it an adaptation that they decided halfway through the game? Um, it, it seems curious nonetheless. I, mean, I, can't, I, can't, I think they probably were deciding to have... I mean, I would pick CP Ringo into a double squishy range drive. Oh, wow. DefQ gets you know, pushed right on in. They turn that around perfectly from the forced accord. Save Me just gets the distance necessary to find that afterburn. It just pulls in the threat. Oblivion flies out, able to dodge it out. But Quadavoir is just taking so much poke. He has the fountain available. He's probably going to have to point it, use it very shortly. Here we go. That's going to be Spaghetti in a lot of trouble. Quadavoir trying to find the return has to just be so careful he doesn't catch a malice to the face. It's going to be a healing camp steal as well, I think by official Heim. He moves through the back there. I think Spaghetti trying to chase him, but Spaghetti's got literally zero energy right now. He'll have to be very careful about how he approaches this. Quadabar's trying to catch him out, potentially. Yeah, it does look like Quadabar may be able to get in position. No, the boots pop, official Heim's Frostburn gone. as well. Frostburn yeah. slowed down Quadabar here. Still tier 1 boots for Quatavar as well, not working towards those war treads to potentially give them ability needed to the team. This is not the impunity we saw yesterday, Dalsy. I'm almost speechless. <laughs> they did that yesterday to us as well. Yeah, but for the right reasons. <laughs> it's uh, it's a, a, a very, very peculiar thing. Uh, like I'm racking my brain because I want to understand it because there's definitely thought there. there, 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 there there's, there's an idea there and I'm, I'm trying to understand what that idea may be uh, so I can... Which what, what, what idea are you trying to get your hands on? Impunity's idea of, of this 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 composition. So the CP Ringo is good against double squishy range because of how much damage the Hellfire Brew does, right? So then you combine that, but it, the, the tension bow doesn't make any sense. That's the thing. I don't. I don't understand the tension bow. Maybe it's just a good item for for pressure. It does make his auto attacks a little bit more impactful. Can shred through a bit of armor. Here comes the pull. Yeah, and I may say we pulled in. Not really the person you want because he just gets the range on the afterburn. Look at Quadavoir falling asleep. He's got the after, uh, fountain. Going to keep him alive for now. Reflex block comes out, but he is just getting melted, and he just couldn't get that polite company out. A kill to Han Yeager's, and it's a crucial one as well. The only person really keeping impunity mm. alive, and instead of a crucible, goes down and. Aegis route. But, I mean, to be honest, that's Finn just right. Finn absolutely destroy. Uh, sorry, Sky uh, CP Sky just destroys Finn because the the Frostburn makes it so that Finn literally can't move. He just soaks up damage, soaks up damage, and DefQ going in here. He's going to walk. He gets isolated by the death from above. Yeah, but he's doing the damage to Hunyagers, and Hunyagers is so low on energy. Official Hines gets caught out, but Spaghetti cannot find the kill. Finally, does get it. Now DefQ looking for the return as well. Anime saved me, just keeping the distance between DefQ and Hunyagers, and DefQ will be forced to. Uh, say goodbye to that mm. idea. War treads there for Anime Save Me. He's already got a lot of it, a, a movement speed, and DefQ unable to catch up even with the Achilles shot. This is a bit risky to push onto this tier one turret here with, I think, Samuel still alive. He can come up and defend this quite easily. They're going to try and do their best here, but here comes Anime Save Me. He's got the afterburn. Yeah, and they're going to have to block this one up. Solar Storm comes out from the base. Spaghetti throws that out, and it does dissuade Elite 8 from chasing. Almost at this 15 minute mark, and it's Elite 8 in the driving position. 3,000 gold up as the Kraken going to be joining us on the Halcyon Fold very shortly. Spaghetti also very delayed in his build path. Now gone for tier 2 builds. Not anywhere near to his 3 item choice here. For uh, for a C for a CP um, Celeste the jungle that's that's a really delay build and you can see DefQ actually now going towards his own broken myth but I mean, what all tension bow has done is like delayed your CP build which is, is I don't know just makes no sense to me to be honest Quatavoir got his own Aegis that does make sense against double CP double reflex block also can uh, defend as much as possible we'll have to see how this one plays out, like the Aegis on Quad of War, it makes sense because yeah. the shielding can be distributed. You can, distribu you can distribute your shielding when you use your polite company. That makes perfect sense, but what doesn't make sense is why he hasn't got a Crucible. 
We're seeing Spaghetti taking huge chunks of damage here. He's going very low here. Comes anime save. Miquadavoir is just so far out and Def Q's under fire. There's no way you can play that game. Quadavoir has to be next to his carries or else there's no point having the Finn with tons of shielding to distribute. They're going to go for the Kraken here. Split up that team from Impunity and they just don't seem to be able to respond. Again, you have to question. No reflect, no Crucible, nothing to protect from that um, extra kind of element of, of uh, the Oblivion that you want to defend against. You want to defend against more Afterburns. Quadavar tries to potentially make a Miracle Steal, but you can see how devastating a Frostburn Sky is. This should be Quadavar potentially paying with his life. I don't think there's any way he's going to escape this particularly. The energy. <laughs> the Solar Storm. I think he might be able to. The Solar yeah. Storm doesn't hit the Kraken. It could have been a potential steal, actually, with how yeah. low it was, but... Unfortunate for Impunity, the Kraken does go over to Elite 8. Elite 8 could be one game away from making the World Finals later this year. And Impunity, the roster that has very rarely lost, if at all, lost a final. Never lost a final. This would be history in Southeast Asia. Never lost a final, this roster. And yesterday, it didn't look like they were going to lose a final. Everybody counted Elite 8 out, including myself. I, I will be the first to raise my hands and say Elite 8 didn't look like they had what it takes to beat Impunity, but bringing back in their sub, bringing back in Anime Save Me, the main roster captain, has been so devastating for Impunity and such a revitalization for the uh, Elite 8 roster. Death Q taking damage here, Quatevoir taking damage, they're forced away, here comes oh, the reflex. Spaghetti just knocked against the wall, that's going to be putting the silence down onto this Finn. The Kraken now pushing in and Quatevoir, he goes so low, Death Q with the Hellfire Brew, but now he's He's going to pay with his life, and Han Jaegers is still alive. They cannot hold down Elite 8. They are looking to take the game here in Game 3 and push themselves to just one more. Spaghetti snipes Han Jaegers, looking for more as Quadavar provides the brick wall necessary. Spaghetti, can he hit the damage? It does look like Elite 8 are going to disengage. Impunity with a second chance. They have one more turret remaining in front of that vein crystal. There's only 4,000 gold, almost 3,000 gold that separates these two teams right now. If only, the I mean, the tension bow just got sold. What yeah. was the point in it? Why did you buy it in the first place? Now three items comes through for Spaghetti. He's got the frost burn, but it's last item frost burn. That should have been first item in my opinion. And maybe now we're hitting this sort of later game stage there could be some element that comes together. I would still love to have seen a Crucible for Quatavar, but it might be too late for that. Infusions are necessary at this point. Hunyegas and Official Heim. Clockwork there for Hunyegas. We saw how much damage output and how much the cooldown reduction affected what he could do with those Malice and Verdict. It's on a two second cooldown. That's not even inside the Drifting Dark. Pool comes through. Here we go. It's Anime Sebi pulled in. Not the person you want. You want to find a prime target. Def Q separated. There's no way he gets out of this one alive. He's going to try and lay down the damage, but he eventually goes down. Solar Storm comes through, but a good block comes in, and it means that it just doesn't do the work. Quadavoir, he's trying to escape. Polite company to uh, along his life. But official Hind is going going to just take down the game, Finn surely. with the series strike. It's very, very likely a scoundrel Spaghetti going to have to put up a godlike defense. Absolutely, and uh, Spaghetti has been so disconnected from these fights from Impunity. You look at him, he immediately backs off well out of the range of Heliogenesis, can do nothing in these fights, uh. and Spaghetti's dead as well. This is Elite 8 taking the second game of the series. Elite 8 will find themselves one game away from the world final position and the winners of the Southeast Asian region. How insane is this? How insane is this to see Elite 8 finally prove a challenge up to Impunity? It's incredible. Look at that. The, the celebrations. It's celebrations in the studios from their fans as well, Scoundrel. Yeah. Everyone is rooting for the Indonesians right now. The underdogs in this finals and they take game three. They're 2-1 up. One more game. One more game for Elite 8 and I think Impunity do need some resetting here because there has been some odd build choices, itemization, sequencing has been off for me. And this double CP, which has been two games in a row now, it needs an, a direct answer, not some sort of roundabout answer, not a Celeste. I don't think Celeste is working right now for Spaghetti. I think he needs to ditch that. They need something that's got early aggression, can put pressure on the Samuel, and they may even, I think they just ban Samuel. Like, just ban Samuel. Everyone expected them to win. This is so much pressure on the backs of Impunity, and for Elite 8, well, there was almost no pressure on them to come and wait, win this against Impunity. Almost no expectation of them, and yet here they are looking to do so. So you can see there, 
We are heading into game now. Dalsy. Or actually, Here's the, the bracket. Roots. It's uh, Elite Eight. They took out Popeyes. It was a hard battle. Three to two. They came back a 2 0 deficit to reverse sweep, whereas Impunity just took out Enix 3 0. And then Enix took out Popeyes 3 0. We fully expected, considering how strong Enix was against, um, uh, against um, Popeyes, that uh, Elite Eight would struggle. But man, here we go. It is going to be this game getting underway. We are experiencing some difficult technical difficulties with our spectator oh, client. It is starting to come alive very, very shortly. Has been two kills, one apiece for each team. Oh, look at those minions. The minions, they're just, they're just zooming. They're flying into lane. So yeah. where did those kills come through? That's interesting. So we had an invade, I expect, early on. Death one Q. kill went over to Official Hind. One kill went over to Dis uh, Death Q. And the people that went down were both captains on either side. Quatevoir has to back out here. Yes, be very careful as the range from this triple range composition it means the siege potential for Elite Eight is certainly there. Quatevoir as a Kafrin going to struggle, but look at the Galema shots coming out. And this wait, is wait, wait a second. This, this is, is Def Q with uh, yeah, CP, CP Kestrel in the lane. Okay. Do you know what? I actually like that more. Well, that's a kill going over. This traded back. Def Q may lose his life as well. Fischl Hein looking for the kill, and he does snipe it away. Impressive stuff. Can he get a triple for himself? Stormguard goes up. Han Jaegers dives forward, and it is going to be all three members of Impunity losing their lives. Why did they stick around? They didn't need to stick around there. I do like this from Def Q a bit more. I really don't like CP Castro in the lane, however. It's very difficult to land glimmer shots effectively. But what it does do is it gives them an earlier spike with the weapon power glaive. They can look to be more aggressive, but they have just given so much of an early advantage over to Elite Eight here with a Baron. And already Frostburn finished for official height at 3 minutes 25. I don't know, this is not looking good for Impunity in this final game. He is 3-0-1 on his Samuel already, a scoundrel, yeah. at 3 minutes. That is huge for the early game power of this Samuel. Anime save me. Taking a lot of hurt in the lane, Def Q, making sure he can't get the heals back. But Official Hine is rotating up. He's going to make himself known as he starts battering away with those Malice and Verdicts. I guess Def Q can throw it back just as good, though. Yeah, the problem is that you do fall off here with the Impunity. You only have the CP Kestrel that scales particularly well. I guess what they do have is... Uh, uh a glaive that if he goes down a critical strike build path can have an instantaneous impact on one of the targets and it does make it slightly harder to itemize because you're going to want both shielding and armor. What a bar. Quite a just tanking so much damage. That's been a case a lot of the time. Decision making has been slightly off this series for him. Yeah, and he goes down half HP. It does have the life spring will start to heal up a little bit. Def Q takes a bit of poke from official hind, but the glimmer shots does a little bit more back in return. But it's the Siege game coming out as uh, Quadavoir has to join Def Q and it looks like Spaghetti's going to rotate up as well. That Bright Bower can shut everyone down, but Quadavoir has already taken almost all his life away, meaning that it's not likely Impunity can stick around to defend this turret. They need to just go in. Like, they can't sit there and take the poke damage because they can't really respond to it. Quadavoir kind of almost tempting them with the Storm Shield here. They need to go in, look for a stun, get Spaghetti in there with the Afterburn and get Death Q trying to find. They're going to lose this turret maybe early on here because of that back and because of how low they are. And obviously Quadavoir has not yet finished the Fountain. That's the first turret already going to Elite Eight because, I mean, Impunity just don't want to commit to a fight. And I, I just think they need to. 2,000 gold now for Elite 8. A very passive impunity here. We're going to see the fountain completed now for Anime Save Me. This Baron has enough gold to complete that Sorrow Blade as well. Get that first item in his back pocket. Impunity, man, it's a, 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 a struggle almost seeing this from them. And I think you're right. They just need to commit. They need to they commit to, to a fight. Because they can't, they can't poke war them because unfortunately you've only got the... Uh, You've, you've literally only got Def Q, which is a little bit harder to hit and at longer range to hit your um, Glimmer Shots compared to the Empowered Malice and Verdict. Here we go, though. We're going to get a start. Yeah, Anime Save Me going to be taking a lot of damage, but Spaghetti gets put to sleep. And Elite Day turn it around with two kills. Impunity just falling by the road. It's only Def Q left alive using that CP Kestrel active camo to escape, and, and he will. And they've committed too late. They commit to the fight too late. They have no fountain. Whereas Anime has the Fountain finished already. Quatevar has just finished his. They commit to the wrong target. They go on the Lyra, who obviously has the healing on themselves. And 
I mean, it's just not looking good right now. Impunity already taking poke damage more often, and now we might have to see them commit because they do have their fountain left over. Here's the stun. Yeah, that's anime save me. After burned away, he should go down, and he does indeed. But Quadavoir is baiting out damage. Has the fountain, pops it out, but this malice and verdict comes. He's so huge. And Hun Jaegers dives forward. Quadavoir loses his life. The Baron at six minutes with a double kill. It is completely the opposite of what you expect to come out of Elite Eight. I know. Unity just looked like a team so different. That's going to be another turret being sieged here. Might not get taken down. Official Hind took a little bit of damage, but I think that Samuel has been more of an issue than I think Impunity wanted to realize. And Elite Eight have had an answer for everything this game. This looks like they are shoring up to become our Southeast Asian champions and finalists, and it'll be a changing of the guard, a historic moment to not see this Impunity roster remain on top in the Southeast Asian region. But not only that gives hope to other Southeast Asian teams that they can compete at this level now. The region as a whole is improving. It's not Impunity getting worse. It's just the region of the whole improving, and Elite Eight are a prime example of that. They came through a trial of fire to get here. A fire of Popeyes. <laughs> And now they find themselves 2-1 up with a serious advantage in this final game potentially for them. Yes, 4,000 gold as well, Excoundrel starting to build up for this team. And Elite 8 feeling very comfortable with their ability to push, push, push and get those objectives, that global gold, into their stomachs. Quatafoire goes in to the front lines, pops that Storm Shield again, but does not yet commit to the fight because unfortunately Spaghetti not quite in position. Looks like a stealth looking to come out, trying to get a flank here, but nothing happening again. It's very defensive from Impunity. They are taking the poke and they can't respond to it. Yes, yeah, Spaghetti needs to look for an afterburn, but just look how much damage he's taking. He is so squishy. There's the Iron Cannon flying out straight on top of the turret, and it's going to just blow it to smithereens. That's another turret going down in favor of Elite Eight, and they are continuing this dominance in this game. Again, it's the one-shot, one-kill coming through. Ooh. Just land onto the Samuel, but oh, they're just not in position. You can't sit there and take the Baron shots, take the Samuel Malice and Verdicts, and not commit to the fight. Spaghetti and Quadivar have to make a move. It is level 6 now, they've got the silence available. Death Q not in position, but they're still just not finding the right moment here. And it's just painful to see compared to the the same level that we saw from Impunity yesterday. And you can't help but feel that, that had they played these other games slightly differently, had they maybe changed the way they built, they might have actually kept themselves in this final, but you've got to give credit to Elite Eight and specifically to Anime Save Me, who has been such an amazing addition to the roster mid-series. The official sub playing remotely has had a massive impact for this team. Yeah, certainly has. Now Eva the Harvest completed for Samuel, breaking point for Johan Jaegers just a, a while ago. Mm. And this is just even more damage coming in the form of Elite Eight. The, it, it, there's no match. Def Q has not completed his second item, going down the double heavy prism. Spaghetti is nowhere near completing a second damage item for himself. Impunity are so far behind. Almost 6,000. No, it is just 6,000 gold at this stage. Nine minutes, you expect Baron to be behind. You expect Baron to be the one trailing. But right now, Hun Jaegers is leading the charge. This is so close. I mean, Elite Eight, if they win this... Whoop. Okay. Elite Eight, if they win this, they get a world spot. Yeah. That is huge because that is a massive event. World teams from all over the world, East Asia, South America, North America, Europe, and obviously Southeast Asia, come to join in a massive competition. And for Elite Eight to have a spot there over this Impunity roster would be massive not only for the organization but for the players. And obviously Indonesia, this is an Indonesian team, remember. Not even a mixed team from the Southeast Asian region. This is just Indonesia. How awesome for their community would it be? To have a team that puts so much into the Indonesian Vainglory community as well, trying to build up the community there. To have them win the Southeast Asian Championships after all of their efforts would be so amazing for that team. Definitely a heartwarming story that Elite 8 are trying to put their signature onto right now. Pressuring down this choke point turret. So much damage just put straight on. Quadavar's going to go very low. He escapes the oblivion, but the turret is now wide open. Spaghetti pushes on up. Going to take down this minion wave and alleviate some pressure. The one shot almost hitting official Heim, but it whizzes past his head and he kills the relief as it doesn't connect. You know that the Impunity roster will be hungry to get another spot for the World Championship if they lose here. But. You have to credit how amazing LE8 have been this time round. And, and it almost feels like there's nothing that Impunity can do. You're at three item Baron at 11 minutes. That is just insane. 
if he gets any shots onto Death Q, who cannot afford to itemize into armor, by the way. He can barely afford to itemize into a reflex block. He just blows up, and then there's Glaive sitting on just a light armor right now. This Baron is going to tear through that uh, Impunity team. And then you've got to add to the fact that Official Heim is closing on three items here as well, and they, the, the, it doesn't feel like, even without the Lyra, there's the threat of the Bright Bulwark, the threat of the poke right now is stopping Impunity from making engages. I think this is DefQ looking to set something up with the active cannon. This yeah. might be one of their only opportunities. Look at West Spaghetti as well. Up in that bush, they're going to look to try and get a flank, catch someone out. It's a double active cannon. Anime is, is just teetering on the edge of it. Spaghetti completely unnoticed. Hanyega's pushing up. He's going to lay down the active cannon. Will he step into it? Will Spaghetti be able to get the flank? So, so close. They're on the edge here, but they have to know something's up. This turret is starting to go down. There it is. Active cannon. They can step into it. Oh. It's a Three-man stun! It's the second time this series, and Impunity now looking to try and turn it around. The damage is not quite there. They are struggling. Spaghetti goes down. Guadavar goes down. A double for Hanyegas, and the damage is insane! A triple! Oh my god. When you get a three-man active camera and you don't win the fight, that's when you know the game is over. Elite Eight. Barreling through into the base right now and Impunity's hopes of getting to the World Finals must be tumbling because that was just insane. You don't see those setups. It's twice this series that those setups have been available for Impunity. But when you get a three-man active camo onto key targets and you don't get the kills, you don't win the fight, you are too far behind to win the game. Baron right there, the critical strikes at this point, doing more damage than the active camo did. This is insane for Elite Eight. They have played their minds out. The sub has been so good for them. Anime Save Me coming in has been a real key into the cogs that needed to allow this Evil Eight machine to turn. Elite Eight machine to turn. And I've got to say, the Samuel has been a major winning factor for them as well. Han Jaegers, four damage items before 13 minutes. That is an insane lead for this Baron. He has almost 150 CS at 13 He's minutes. 40 CS up on Death He's Q as well. 40 CS up on C Death Q. Death Q has not completed a third tier three. He is second, he's not completed his a second. Build. He's not even completed a second tier three item. He is so far behind as far as damage is concerned. Neither has Spaghetti. Spaghetti has been struggling to get gold as it's just been choked yeah. away. Elite eight with a 10,000 gold lead, almost 11,000. And it just feels like it's done. You are staring down at the live, you know, the champions of potentially of the Southeast Asian region. We just have a potential slight bug here. We'll make sure we get back on track as soon as we physically can. Yeah, no, this is uh, going to be it. coming back in. And you can see the pause coming out. It's in the midst of a fight. Look at Hanyaga's HP, 583. Obviously, whatever just happened for Impunity was well-timed. Small pause coming out there. Hopefully the players get back on track. It was the middle of an active camo stun or whatever happened there. Potentially taking out Baron here could be massively influential for the team. Could maybe get Impunity back on track, but it's a big, big road back up. Huge gold deficit to have to climb for the, the roster. Wow. Just look at the faces as well on Impunity. They are straight-faced, Scoundrel. They are staring... Spaghetti looks incredibly focused. Quadaval almost bemused. And you would be. I, I, no one expected Elite 8 to come out firing such shots like this. It does look like the players are getting ready to go. Fingers poised. We are getting back into this game. And it is going to be Hanyega still alive for now. But unfortunately, we do have even more issues on our spectator clients. So we cannot quite update you as to what is going down. The players are still going, the players are still going. Actually, oh, whoa, whoa, I have no idea what happened, whoa. but it looked like Hunyegas and Official Hein cleaned up. Now Quadavar trying to escape, but even with Hunyegas getting taken out, the Official Hein's damage is just too high right now. Potentially a mistake here from Elite Eight, looking at the death timers, looking at the minion wave, looking at the position of the chase. Without Baron, I don't think they could have finished. I, don't, I think it would have been a big ask for them to finish without Baron. Hunyegas is uh, going to respawn. And uh, I think Kraken will be on the cards right now for Elite Eight. Kraken will be the absolute ceiling blow to secure this Southeast Asian Championship and knock impunity from their throne. Spaghetti attempting to uh, itemize into a poison shiv as his second 
damage item. Christ. Death Q finishes his second it's, at it, 15 minutes. Exactly, it's, it's second items getting finished here. I mean, Quadivar's got a got an aftershock. I kind of, I kind of understand, but you need something for the, you, you need and, a crucible for boots. the Oblivion. You need boots, journey boots. There, I. It, yeah. You know what? We're, we're done with these scoundrel rants. This, let's just celebrate how well Elite Eight have played because they have been outstanding. They have been outstanding. They really have. Now the Kraken to be threatened on down. Def Q lands a couple of crucial shots. All the one shot. Would have that connected? It could have been a fight. It started on up. Iron Cannon going to fly on out. It's more of a scouting tool. Spots out the middle of the wave there. And now the Flares trying to find this CP Kestrel, trying to find where Spaghetti is hiding on out. Elite 8 showing respect to the potential of being caught out here. Mm. They're trying to respe respect for those active camos, which have been a real nuisance for them, you have to say. And you can see Anime Save Me working towards a contraption, realizing that he does need to maintain vision control here to be able to scout out not only the Kestrel, but those active camos as well. Elite 8 have been fantastic this series. Quatafar again, face tanks. Storm Shield will save the damage from him. But Impunity are just so far behind on items right now, both defensively and offensively. You don't really see a way to stall this out for long enough. You were above 10k behind. You're about 11k behind at this point in time. That is a massive deficit in Vainglory to have to try and climb back. Kraken's going to get started. If you feel if this doesn't get stolen, if this goes over to Elite 8, this will be sealing their championship. Two Vein Crystal turrets and the Vein Crystal separating Elite 8 from becoming Southeast Asia champions for the first time here. Iron Cannon gonna go out. Here comes Quatavar looking for a steal. Blast Tremor gonna silence. One oh, shot stolen. steals it. That's the steal coming through from Death 2. And Imp uh, Impunity just going to fall back and allow the Kraken to do the work. That's an Oblivion over the wall. They're trying to find this Kestrel and they found her. Death Q take down 605, but they're trying to turn the damage around. Spaghetti does not have it. If they die here, this could just be the end. A double for Hun Jaegers. Quadavar running for his life. But what are Elite Eight doing? Looks like they're dealing with the Kraken. They've got plenty of time to deal with Kraken here. This just buys a bit more time over to Impunity, but they need lots more time. You feel like this was a small remedy. But where, where do they go? What do they do with this time? What do they build? They are so far behind in items and so far behind in damage and going up against a composition that scales so well and has already scaled. That's the important thing. They have already scaled, Dalsy. 17 minutes and you're already at late game. And the contraption has been finished and now Kestrel has become, become even less effective. This impunity roster is struggling. Struggling and they have struggled for the last three games. Ever since Anime Save Me came in, their draft has been awkward. The build paths have been awkward, and Elite Eight have capitalized and played excellently. The contraption, as you can see, the scout traps now littered around the middle of the map here at Scoundrel. Anywhere Elite Eight can walk towards, a, a scout trap will almost certainly follow. Yeah, and, and you can start. see Anime Save Me planting them everywhere. If you get control of that middle area as well, it means it's so difficult to even contest the Kraken. Currently just impunity looking. Hoping that a trap is walked into. Death Q gonna reveal his location and Elite 8 are gonna start pushing towards it. He has been caught out, he's inactive. Camo Flare hasn't spotted just yet. In fact, he's behind, and I don't think Elite 8 are expecting him to be sitting behind Han Jaegers. He can't, he, he can't even get in there because of the threat of the flares and the potential scout traps from the contraption. And he can't start launching an assault of glimmer shots because it's just not going to be enough right now. He's you know going up against double Aegis that has been completed. A full build Baron with infusion and an almost full build Samuel with infusion. Elite 8 pushing into the base here. Glimmer shots flying out from Death Q. He is low on energy. No regen available. That's a silence flying out. Hanyegas blocks it, but that's a one shot connecting onto Anime Save Me. And he'd be happy to tank those up all day long. Elite 8, the damage being dealt. Quatavoir will have to fall back to the base. But Elite 8 with a minion wave are now looking to finish this one out. Death Q found out. Anime Save Me dives on forward, but they don't find the kill. Spaghetti pushed away. Oblivion on the staircase but it's just not enough to catch out impunity they survive this onslaught and elite eight will leave 
Scout Trap's there, they will spot out the Kestrel. Hearts pounding, fingers trembling. We're right at the end of the game here for Elite Eight. They want to make this happen right now. And Quantavar is in the midst of it all. He's trying to heal up the fountain for himself. Hanyega's looking to get the damage onto this Kestrel. And it looks like Quantavar may have just stepped outside of death's range. The Glimmer shots are there. Hanyega's is taking so much damage. The one shot will hit, but a good reflex block going to take the majority of that damage. Again, they've got control of the Kraken area, they can back off, they don't need to overcommit here. They don't need to give any more space to Impunity that they have already given them. Impunity have been surviving though, Quatevoir has got fairly tanky, but only 22 stacks now. About one stack a minute that he's sitting on his uh, passive, but he's again building to what looks like a potential clockwork. Still no Crucible, still nothing to block the, um, the Oblivion across the entire team. And now Elite are either looking to bait, We'll run round. They actually showed themselves. Quatavar will isolate himself here. This might have been a mistake. He's going the wrong way. He's going to right, run around the rosy. One shot going to catch Hun Jaegers. That is a dangerous time. The Kraken's been started up. They don't have vision of this impunity. They would have expected that Elite 8 just dropped the aggro immediately. In fact, they're going back to base. They are not expecting this Kraken oh, to be going over major, impunity. Major, major, major mistake here. Oh, Quatavar Quatavar realizes. He's going to notice it. Ion Cannon's going to come on down. The one shot is not up. They have to get up close. The steal does not come through. Kraken unleash and Quatavar going to go very low. Death Q being chased on down. Hanyegas with the damage. And that is a very dead Kestrel. Spaghetti dies on in. Hanyegas surviving. Spaghetti goes down, it's only Quadavoir, and the ace comes through for Elite 8. There is no way that they don't win this with the Kraken right now. They've got 40 seconds to barrel on through. You can already see the roster starting to celebrate, hands in the air. They are so close to finishing this game, just two turrets stand in between a new Southeast Asian champion. The roster, the might of impunity has fallen. And the Elite Eight roster are now barreling down onto these uh, these crystal turrets. How insane of a ride has this been for them to almost lose to the Challenger team and now find themselves hitting onto these turrets to finish the game off. Here comes Kraken. There is not enough that Impunity can do to stop this. Elite Eight cried for Anime to save them, and he certainly did in this series. Say hello to yourself. East Asian champions as they are afraid the Kraken should be able to take their base. It will do so. They are the South East Asia Spring champions. And not only that, they are our Southeast Asian qualified world team. The first qualified world team of the year and Impunity, they do not look happy. They look broken. But look at the joy on the Elite Eight roster. They are so over the moon, and, and Ilok even happy, obviously, being subbed out for his team to win. He did his part, he got them through the semi-final, but in the final, they required the sub-in of anime, and how insane has it been for him. Came in on three games on the trot, Impunity, the roster that has been undoubtedly the best in the region. Undisputedly champions across the last year and a half or so, and Elite Eight are the first all Indonesian team as well to knock them off that spot. And again, we talked right at the start of this tournament about how much work they had done for the Indonesian community, how much they'd done to promote Vainglory there, and they have been rewarded with all of their effort in both practicing, all of their effort in promotion, and now they are our new Southeast Asian champions, our first Southeast Asian qualified world team. We will be seeing them later in the year towards the end of 2017 at the Vainglory World Championships. They will represent the pride of the Southeast Asian region, and I've got to be honest, they have done it incredibly well. Yeah, there they are, flying that Indonesian flag. They are so, so ecstatic about their victory. They said earlier that they just wanted to bring a trophy home for their mum on Mother's Day, and they've done so. This is going to be Elite Eight taking that victory and we have a new champion in Southeast Asia.